Hey guys, welcome back to Home Theater Guru. So today we're gonna to be doing a Q&A, so let's go ahead and jump right into it. Darkmod738 asks, I wanna know if using different size subwoofers in home theater would be a good or bad idea. I keep seeing videos of people saying not to do it, but really want to know the pros and cons. Can you make a video of this, please? Thanks. First of all, sure, it's a great idea if you're getting multiple subwoofers. Of course, we need multiple subwoofers if we have more than one seat. If you have one seat, you can usually get away with one sub as long as it meets your output needs. Now that doesn't mean, you know, you may move a foot over and the response changes. So that's something you have to verify. It's usually best to have at least two in a room. You know, you may need more depending on, you know, the room and the output needs again. Two subwoofers usually with one row. I mean, you can see my response in my home theater here because now this is used modal analysis to place the seats and subs. And with two subs, I've got an insanely tight seat to seat. So all the seats sound the same. I've got my output needs taken care of. There's no reason for me in that room to have more subs. I'm not gonna gain anything. I don't need more output. I've got plenty of headroom. You can't get any better uh, seat to seat tightness than, than I've really got. So there's nothing to gain from adding more. That's also a very symmetrical room. So in a symmetrical room, it's easy. I mean, I can tell you where to put the subs. You know, I do over hundred room plans a year and you know, rooms like that are a piece of cake if they're symmetrical or you have parallel walls, you know, or at least some of them, then I can, you can calculate where they need to go. But if you've already got subs and maybe you've got, you know, uh, a 15 and you've got a 12, do you need to upgrade that 12 to another 15? Well, no, not really. So there are some things that we need to look at. So first of all, if you've got an irregular room or a sub in the front, a sub in the back, uh, the response is not even gonna look alike, even if it's the same sub. Now, if you have a very symmetrical room and both subs are up front, equidistant from the sidewalls, you're sitting you know, dead right in the middle of them, they're going to measure very, very similar. They should in most rooms. So you're gonna get similar output, similar sound from them. Now you take one of those subs, now again, these are identical subs, you move it behind you or you move it you know, down the wall somewhere, or maybe you move over to the left or to the right, you're not sitting centered anymore. Now all of a sudden, it's not going to sound the same. And when you measure the response, they're gonna have nothing to like. Let's go ahead and look at an example of this now. Okay, so now we're looking at a screenshot from episode seven. This is uh, the episode where I use Room EQ Wizard to align four subs in a room. This is my old room, which is also symmetrical. All right, so let's look at, uh, let's say we had two subs in this room. The one that's light green, that's one sub. So that was one of our front subs and the blue one. Now, if you look at that blue one, that's a rear sub. There is a huge dip from, you know, 40 to uh, what, 80 Hertz. It just dips, you know, way down. Now above 30 Hertz, it's fine. It's got plenty of output. So that sub right there, even though these are the same subs, it is it needs a lot of help there okay so if that was the only sub we had in the room and we and so we only had two or three spots we were limited on placement we had to have a sub to help out in that area we don't need a huge sub you know if this is a 15 and we already had a 12 we could take that 12 throw it in the room and if it gives us an output like that red does where the red gives us extra output in that area those two would blend, they should blend pretty well, or we could look at it, see how it blends, and then we can check our seat to seat and see how that consistency looks. With two subs, it's gonna look better, or it should look better than it did with one sub, at least you know our seat to seat response, how similar they are. But um, some companies even use smaller subs and call them fill, filler subs. I think Priscilla uh, used to have this on their website. The website's changed a lot through the years, but at one time they would have like packages where you know, or where you could get like a 15 and a 12. The 12 was called a filler sub or something, you know, along those lines, because that's what it was really using, you know, doing. If you had an issue in, you know, your larger sub and it was in the 50 hertz range, 40 hertz range, you may not need a sub if you've got plenty of output already, you know, down low. If you don't need any output down there, well maybe, depending on the location, you can use a smaller sub to help fill those areas and fix the issues. Um, so, sure, if you're buying subs, Get the same size there's nothing wrong with that uh at all i mean i would too um, you know right now i've got a 15 and a 12 because i'm demoing two different subs in the the room i'm reviewing them and they blend just fine i mean the room sounds fantastic 
you know, uh, but there's no rule, there should be no rule that you must have the same subs. And also with ported subs, uh, some people say you can't mix ported and sealed. Well, actually, if you have ported subs, multiple ported subs, and they all have different tunings, that's far worse than having one ported and one sealed. Because every when you have a ported sub, you have a phase shift at the tuning frequency. If those tuning frequencies are all over the place in different, you know, at different frequencies, they're not all the same, that's a case where you do want the same sub or you want, if you have uh, multiple ported subs, you wanna make sure that in their different companies, different, you know, different subs, make sure the tuning frequencies are very similar so that way you're getting that phase shift around the same spot. Not, you know, not five hertz, you know, like at 30 hertz, 25 hertz, one's maybe tuned to, tw you know, to 20. Now you've got three different phase shifts at different points, that's gonna really be a train wreck compared to just if you had a sealed and a ported. You know, if you had a ported sub that was tuned to 15 hertz and a sealed sub, you're not gonna have a problem, especially if you don't even, you know, if you're rolling it off under 20 hertz, that phase shift is not even gonna really be an affect the room because you're rolling it off before you even get there. I personally, even if my subs can extend down to 10 hertz, I like to start rolling it off around 20, pretty steep because I want to I want to get all the audible output I can but below that I like tra tactile transducers because the really low energy pressurizes the room so much it can be rough on the person the people in there but also it beats a snot out, snot out of the room and that is room distortion when the walls are shaking it's taking you out of the movie and the film and you're like okay my, my walls are shaking which is cool but it's not really what I want when I watch a movie I don't want to be pulled out of it so I prefer to, to roll my subs off around 20 hertz and use tactile transducers because that you still get the, the feel, the tactile feel and the experience and you can adjust it and dial it in and it's not beating the snot out of the room. My preference. So bottom line, it is absolutely 100% okay to run different size subs. Now I do want to add subwoofers or the, those frequencies, it takes a lot to reproduce them, especially if you're going down below, you know, to 15 and below 15 hertz, it's a tremendous amount of displacement, a lot of air you've got to move to have really good output, especially if you're pushing your system to negative five or, you know, two reference, pushing it, some, you know, even if you're going to negative 10, that's still going to be some extreme levels of, you know, if you're going real low, it's, that's a tremendous task you're asking those subwoofers. It takes a lot of air movement to really produce with low distortion. So, uh, you know, you, you need to make sure you're hitting your output requirements for your needs. But if you're doing that, you got, you got two subs, you've already got a small sub, you've got a, an issue you need to fix, sure, use it, try it out. It may do just fine and you may not have to upgrade or ever buy, you know, buy another sub. If it's fixing the issue, you've got your output needs, you've got a nice seat to seat, there's nothing more you can really gain. All right, guys, that's gonna be it for this one. If any of you guys out there need help with home theater design, that is what I do. So reach out to me. My contact information is down in the description. Uh, if you have any questions for upcoming Q and A's, leave the comment down below and you might be in one of the new videos. I try to pick stuff that, you know, kind of like this, that a lot of people would like to know. All right, guys, I'll see y'all for the next one.